question and wanted to kind of give an update and just give a shout out to Dead and Tears. Um, I feel like it's kind of gone, um, I'm not say under the radar, but I don't, maybe because it's a bit to be expected and anyway, maybe because everyone kind of wears the the flipping jeans with the flipping reef around them all over the place, right? Everyone kind of is a fan of those. But I feel like over time, Tremaine's really kind of knuckled down or refined or just kind of luxed up just what he does overall with Dead and Tears. I feel like it's really, really kind of hitting its own stride and just very simply, not complicated shit, just very, very simply. And I feel like the recent stuff that he put out, these flipping patchwork flannel things, um, which are amazing. No, sorry, I think they're flannel scarves, if I'm not mistaken, which kind of basically look like a riff on what needles were doing, but essentially done in a more, I feel like, interesting way with these like flannel scarf type of thing numbers going on. Or maybe the flip the fraying at the ends of the patches or the flannels maybe illustrating the tears kind of motif going on there but to me they kind of look like they are um flannels that may be taken from scarves or whatnot but either way i feel like these are done really really well and the finishing is impeccable um even though i did like a little bit of the handmade diy feel of early denim tear stuff it felt like he was kind of cutting and sewing and making it at home or whatnot i do like this kind of evolution of kind of just refining everything and this latest stuff that he's done has been so good this uh what's it called uh we'll scroll up uh, this piece patchwork um collection or capsule thing that he's doing which i think is done if, as well in, in part with um flipping what's it called in part with um levi's is banging if i'm not mistaken let's play the sound here and look at the flipping label also look at that label african diaspora goods denim tears established 1619 like oh, that label's absolutely dumb and silly. Now, I'm not just sure if it's a collaboration with Levi's itself, but the collection itself is so, 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 so good. Let's quickly get it up on here so you can see. And of course, the bag also looks absolutely amazing um, that they have available. This bag is absolutely great. This kind of camp shopper. They've got this Western shirt. But my favorite is this over shirt that kind of reminds me you know of classic over shirts that i've had beforehand with some um diagonal pockets in the front and this sort of like snap closure here on the on the front as well but the thing that i love the best about it is the contrast stitching like i have a thing for black and white contrast stitching anyway it's just one of my flipping um guilty play not guilty play it's, it's one of it's one of my achilles heels when it comes to clothing like you give me something nicely made with a flipping patchwork um on it and some contrast stitching i'm gonna be all over it and i feel like this is done so well the shape of it it probably looks like it's gonna be warm as hell it looks like the kind of item that if you wear it day in day out it's gonna wear it incredibly the pants to match just absolutely brilliant really exquisitely well done even the hat looks so so great and i'm sure the hat won't end up looking good on me when i actually finally do put it on my head but i feel like this is done really well and then on top of that it feels like once you follow the link of course to go to denim tears website it feels like maybe the success of denim tears has been you know the success and the selling out of stuff it looks like you know he's maybe funneling back all the monies that he's making off of this flipping brand and putting it into just making the experience of the e-commerce site just flow well i feel like before the e-commerce site was a bit buggy for a little bit haphazardry a little bit like html code yourself at home but now it feels like it's been spruced up and just kind of runs properly and then towards the bottom here of the website i'm looking at online it says powered by spotify and i'm not sure if this is a collab thing but having known what's happening um, obviously what, what was widely reported with Supreme moving all this kind of on e-commerce things across the Spotify and leaving Splay it wouldn't surprise me if maybe in-house Spotify have got like a little team of people who go out and reach out to brands and basically trying to get them aboard and try to have them you know maybe give them a really spruced up pro account and always have people on the Shopify side of things who could be their liaison and they kind of go to person if they have any issues but essentially they can kind of build out their entire store and make sure that it's tight and it runs well so that's absolutely amazing to see that that's a thing going on with the site but if you click the shop itself I feel like the experience is really smooth and really easy to use and the shirt i just wanted just to highlight that shirt that i absolutely love because i feel like it's done really well and also i feel like you can tell the improvement of or the success overall of how the brand is being received by people because the prices feel like they're a lot more manageable or reasonable than they were in previous times i feel like before maybe because stuff was made maybe made to order slow quantities maybe it was made in local factories maybe it was made handmade at home whatever it may be they kind of had to charge a bit more to make up for the cost but now they kind of you know maybe you've spruced up the manufacturing and production they can afford to price it like you would expect a regular brand would price stuff and 
this I feel like is a lesson to be learned for people, especially kids out there who want to support smaller brands. They feel like, oh man, it's so expensive at the start. Because I remember even when, because I was around when Fear of God first launched. And I remember that was one of the early criticism of Fear of God is that they were expensive from out the gate. But the whole idea behind Fear of God with Jerry Lorenzo, he kind of founded what he did was that he was trying to fill a, a gap in the market of a particular type of fit of a pant, a particular type of fit of a track pant, of a t-shirt, of a hoodie, of a particular type of shorts. And it was, it was taking kind of inspiration for a lot of different brands, right? He took, he liked the shorts from Rick Owens. He liked maybe the pants and the cut of the shirt or the jacket from, um, Hedy Samain's um, St. Laurent Paris at the time there were different bits and pieces of other brands he was taking and kind of using as inspiration to kind of funnel into his own brand but the main reason was hey I can't find these things that are perfect to my you know liking out there and of course other people also like them that's why they sell out and he's become super successful off the back of that brand but they had to start from somewhere and they had to kind of price it quite high because it was being made small quantities. It was probably being made locally. Um, and just unfortunately, you know, those kind of things are going to be quite expensive. But if you ride with them over time, the quality standards will improve and you will also most notably be able to get something that you can kind of, not say afford, but it's a little bit more reasonable in terms of a price going forward. So I think that's what they kind of saw with um, with Dead in Tears. And that's what obviously you see with with them flipping them. Um, what's called Fear of God. And I feel like this show is a good example of it with it being the piece of padded the piece piece sorry patchwork padded jacket being 285 pounds um it's something that you wouldn't have probably seen when when denim tears first launched and again the the shirt the shirt jacket thing is just impe impeccable i love everything about it man. it's absolutely fantastic so i just wanted to give those guys a shout out and you know it's great to see them doing great things here this is made of 100 percent cotton with a quilted lining this is more than jacket it's a shirt and it fits slightly oversized so yeah big up them and clearly they've been doing great things what seal size is available yeah see selling out really well extra small medium are already out of stock and i'm sure medium large and excel and double excel probably be out of stock very soon also but yeah big up um denim tears we can see the quality of it improving over time all the time and it's getting better and better and it's more refined and clearly clearly he's becoming you know basically occupying a league of his own when it comes to sort of things so i love to see it i'm not gonna lie i absolutely love to see it <laughs>